Arr, grog. Hello and welcome to the Sideship Podcast. I'm Peter Fickling and as always I'm joined by Kerry Warbis and Matthew Weir. So let's get it over and done with. Matthew was right. Matthew was right all over the place <laughs> last week. Are we talking about Blake? I think we are. I thought just generally. <laughs> now, now, don't get ahead of yourself. Also, <laughs> I said it was Banjo, the horse. So that was a jocular moment. So, you know, I was, I, I was thinking it was probably one of the uh, horses myself. So we're both well, to, right. To be clear, uh, the thing that Kerry and Matthew were right about was um, I and many other people were sort of super ramped up for Rob's you know, vengeful return. And they they clocked the fact that it was going to be Blake padding around forlornly looking for um, you know you know breadcrumb trails of Philip's whereabouts and actual breadcrumbs probably. <laughs> Lee was funny, wasn't it? I loved when he said, "I wish he'd ring the doorbell and tell us what he wants instead of sneaking <laughs> around when he was still thinking Rob was about to pounce." Yeah, and we we were saying last week they'd gone too early mentioning Rob's name and they mm. they were even doing that on Sunday's episode, weren't they? Like Lee was talking about Rob as if he was there and he wasn't. And he's also got very jumpy with the security camera. Oh, he? Yeah. he went out, I think he gave Joy's cat the five finger death punch or something. <laughs> yeah. Cause he, he was going, it's Rob. He's out there now based on nothing. Wasn't mm. he getting very oh, and didn't he say that he keeps fantasizing about pummeling Rob to death or something, <laughs> beating him to a pulp? God. Wasn't it? Yeah, 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 that's right. Then Kirsty was like, But you can't do that. <laughs> he was like, No, of course, I can't. <laughs> yeah, he actually physically can't, probably. I would imagine. Are we leading up to that? Do you think, do you think the black belt thing is going to come into play and he literally will be like, Whoa. I think so because there was that little piece of them Jay Warbiss. That was Joy's cat getting the five finger death punch. <laughs> oh, in which case, fantastic acting, Kerry, and I apologise for my garrulous accusations. But there is, you know, that whole thing with the archers. Everything's going to be okay. There was the conversation between Kirsty and Helen, mm. where she was saying, "Like, that now there's a rational explanation for everything that happens." Yes, yeah, but is there? And she said, "I feel very defiant all of a sudden about yeah. my future and life itself." It's like, right, you're going down, love. Next week, yeah. here comes Rob. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the thing. I think um, Kerry slightly stole my thunder because I was. Um, I think that it might be a, a double bluff. I think they've rather kept cleverly or um, carefully interwoven the two plots. So it's kind of like, here comes Rob. Oh no, it's actually Blake. We they bring bring back the relevance of that plot line, and then we're in, and then they can actually give us a proper surprise when yeah. Rob does suddenly appear. Yeah, yeah. Last week in on this very podcast, I did say that there, you know, some you know people on Twitter are saying then we, there'll be none of this build up announcing his ap- appearance. He's just going to like burst onto the scene somehow i mean you said didn't you matthew it'd be great if he suddenly tries to buy a chocolate bar in the yeah shop or you know we just hear that voice now, now you've used the verb burst i'm hoping he's going to appear out of jill's cake <laughs> well, I, th- I thought you were going to make an alien reference <laughs> it's going to tony's going to have a mysterious stomach ache and then suddenly out he comes <laughs> you know, an alien rob cross between that alien and hannibal lecter just climb out of tony's guts yeah what did you think of um blake's appearance in t- oh because lee rugby tackled him to the ground of course didn't he guy thinking it was rob yeah i mean i'm gonna say i'm gonna say it was a very different energy we get from blake than from rob um you know <laughs> this is controversially they're very different men um yeah. but uh yeah blake's not quite as confident i i uh i found so I've been thinking today about how, what's the right way of saying this? Because I don't want to be too negative. I try not to be too negative, but I really struggle with Blake as a character. I find the way he's written very difficult. Um, I find the way that he's been, the actor's been directed quite difficult. Um, I don't, I never want to criticise the actor because I always think that, you know, we don't know what's going mm. on behind the scenes. But whatever is going on behind the scenes is not making me feel convinced and uh, it doesn't feel true to me anyway. Ah, and I don't claim to, by the way, I don't. By the way, I just to, you know, I don't claim to be an expert in in um, uh, people who've been in modern slavery. That is interesting that you say all of that. I, I, when you say I, I would never want to criticise an actor, can I just put a caveat in there? 
apart from Adam. <laughs> uh, however, generally speaking, on t- you're bucking a trend here, which is interesting that Twitter are loving the acting and feeling he's very well portrayed because he, he's a cow- really? cowering individual, isn't he? And he's very... Perhaps I think people are saying he's got special needs of some kind. Don't know. Are you allowed to say that? Don't know. Is that a term? Hasn't, hasn't okay? it been? Wasn't it hinted at before that there was some something there underlying with Blake, not just that he's been browbeaten? Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember, but it sounds that way to me. It's not just mm. that he's living in fear. He seems, do you know what? He seems absolutely adorable as a person, doesn't he? He's He's got lovely, warm characters. He was very pleased that the playground was being used, that he'd helped to build. And he ha- had a camaraderie with Kenzie and the other one. I think this is all the called? stuff that I was reacting to. Oh, right. Okay. Tell us more then, Peter. About Well, um, just quickly, um, the accent. I'm not convinced about the accent. Um, I, you know, to a small extent, I mean, like if he's supposed to be, you know, I live in Southeast London and, you know, he, he's, I think he's supposed to sound like someone who's from, um, inner city Britain and it doesn't convince me that accent. I've, you yeah, know, but who so, knows what his parentage is and what uh, his yeah, background well, is. True, true. But, but I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just, I can only say what, how I'm, I'm reacting, but yeah. um, also I find it, I find the whole thing a bit too one dimensional, this kind of um, the idea that, you know, he had the, the victims have to be sort of the un, unrelentingly good. Um, you know, he does, he can be, I just feel like, he can be, okay. So Lee turned up and Lee was karate and good man. That's all they could find the space for in the scripting was to make him karate good man. And gradually we've all appreciated the fact that Lee is starting to be stupid karate good man. (laughs) He's also bad at DIY. And maybe Blake, Um, they just don't have the space for Blake to be a more complex character. He's not just stupid karate good man. He's stupid karate wanting to smash people's faces in though, isn't he? And has a temper. Facets, thousands of thousands of facets are appearing on the more facets are appearing on the diamond that is Lee. But but don't worry because I think you know Blake hasn't smashed Robert's face in yet or done something you know untoward. Robert hasn't mentioned to Blake that he nearly smashed Philip's face in once when Philip came around the house. God, everyone on the archers smashes people in the face. (laughs) It's one of the most dangerous places to be. I thought there was that quite chilling moment where if you're trying to put him at ease, Linda goes to visit him in the hospital and she's like, are you okay? I was in the car that hit you yesterday. And you blew me up. Yes. Yeah, you're quite neutral, Linda. But I've brought you a car magazine. Yeah, it's obviously going to be PlayStation magazine, isn't it? Chris is just not paying any attention. Also, Peter's deep understanding of accents, I mean, in London, is that... I'm pretty good with accents, to be fair. Okay. But do you hear that many? I mean, because basically you leave your door, the driver takes you to the coffee section of Selfridges and you come home again. Uh, as you know, Matthew, I don't uh, get coffee from other places. I <laughs> brew my own in incredibly elaborate and complex methods. Oh, um, yeah. We do actually know that. What with that yeah. contraption you've just purchased on eBay? Looks yeah, like some sort of torture device. More of that later, maybe. But um, okay. Uh, well, uh, OK. So, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't pretend to be anything... That I that I'm not. I am a, uh, a very very middle class um, man who's had a very sort of privileged upbringing. But I have lived in South London for most of most of my life, and and no no I do you know I, I do occasionally hold my nose and talk to the poor. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, okay. I mean, I, I've, I'm not I've just... people. I'm not one of those people who who sort of resolutely sticks to their own kind. Oh God, I just had a vision of you looking like Prince Regent then you know with like a cane and a proper sort of cravat or handkerchief and a waistcoat and a cur- those curls in your hair really you're <laughs> sort of treading on someone's coat over a puddle i don't always wear my school tie guys all right <laughs> no. but does it have does it have the little prefect shield badge on it still and 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 oh of course but i had to sew it on um uh, you know after all my alma mater's um uh, haberdashers don't make elasticated clothing so I have to kind of like fashion that myself but you know I mean yeah so I don't claim to be I don't claim to be an expert in any of these things but I do feel like I have a pretty good ear for an accent and I, I just feel like it's not 
true and also he as a character just isn't ringing true to me so i mean it's probably my fault i just think your argument is fundamentally flawed because you're saying in a in a very sort of nutshell way that everyone from south east london sounds the same no 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 it's not what i'm no i'm saying very specifically that blake's accent doesn't has some gaps and holes in it and that jars with me and I find it difficult to listen to. But I can be forgiving of that because by the same logic I would find Kate unlistenable or I would find because mm. I think you know, Kate's accent wanders around sometimes or, um, you know, a lot of the actors, obviously, you know, they they, they can't always sort of, you know, be 100% perfect on this stuff. But I but the combination of the one dimensionality of the characterization, the um, the oversimplicity of uh, uh, his, his kind of involvement, he is just he is just victim. He is just good. Uh, he is just good slave who has who has been you know um, who has now he's he's too one dimensional for me. Yeah, but Peter, and, Peter, uh, Peter, he has only been in it a couple of episodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think you need to like wait a little bit. Be have patience. And I know you're saying so far this is your impression, but we don't we don't know. All we've heard is him being really pressured into eating a three course meal <laughs> and watching <laughs> um, what's the film uh, singing, singing in, in the, the rain. rain. Uh, and and legging it, oh, I don't blame him. His whole Eliza Doolittle act, where he was kind of wetting the bed with excitement as he talked about the dancing man, it just did it not great a bit. The writing for that. Um, well, listen, I'm going to address a couple of things you said. First of all, <laughs> on the accents, as you know, I watch a lot of football Twitter. He sounds just like any of the youth who are being interviewed coming out of any London football stadium to me. And secondly, his state of mind is. Um, a culmination of things isn't it he might not have been as broken before the explosion and before being sold on and then whatever he was probably feeling quite insulated and safe with philip and gavin and he's been he's been broken further since then so i think you have got a very nervous individual who wasn't didn't have the greatest start before all of that i've just thought of a really good experiment we could do why don't we all live in a shed over the winter and see what we come out of the other end sounding like? I would sound vastly improved. I think I would sound incredibly <laughs> relaxed. Do I get to take my books with me? No, no luxuries. It's like no, Desert Island Discs. You can no only coffee take, machine. You can only take the Bible and uh, one book maybe that you can... Oh, I'm going to make it best. I'm going to, I'm going to be best at this if we're going to make it turn into a competition. I don't have a garden. Yeah, that's your main concern. Listen, it will be a shed that we cr construct for the three of us to live in over winter. All together, with yeah, together with just the Bible. Well, we are the cider shed, aren't we? I mean, it's yeah. just right there. Yeah. Well, Matthew Matthew turns up with his recipe book, and it's just a question of who gets eaten first, Gary, me or you. <laughs> what what did what... boil me down for stock, ready to um, for the big <laughs> for the big cook off later on? <laughs> bring what your skillet, think... Peter. Bring your skillet. This whole, um, it was like a cross between three and a bed and come dine with me, wasn't it? Because they were staying at the the, the B and B, and then he had to kind of rate the starter. Robert said, "Like, do you like my starter, Blake?" What was it? Do you think? No, we didn't get to hear, did we? We didn't. No. I'm surprised Robert didn't go up and be like, "You ruined my night on purpose, Blake." Yes. Oh, that lovely speech about yeah the dumper truck thing. You yes. have the grace and decorum of a reversing dumper truck. Well, I just hope um, that Robert wasn't so uh, insensitive as to do a flambe because uh, both Blake <laughs> and them have um... Yeah, the crepe Suzette's never got a look in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. I thought, you know, when Blake was saying, I, I can't afford the, the bread, bed and breakfast because I, I don't have any money. And I was expecting Robert to go, don't worry, you can do some hard labour in the garden <laughs> to pay for it. Yeah, I've got, I've, my duck hide needs fixing. What? He's he's got a bird twitching hide, doesn't oh, he? Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> do I don't know what I thought that was. Does he? Does he? I'm oh, sorry. That, sorry, I I didn't I didn't realise he had his own his own um, hide. But um, just just sorry, just to be a bit oversensitive. I I I do I do of course remember all the agonies that Blake Blake has been through, and I do of course have nothing but sympathy for him as a character. I just, as usual, am focused on myself and finding some of the way it's being delivered to me a bit irritating. So there's are two separate things, right? I'm not I'm not trying to devalue 
his experience or kind of look down on him or, or I don't, I'm not looking down on the real world people, the real world Blakes, look, you know, I'm, you I'm just, know you just hate slaves, act. Peter. <laughs> There's no getting away from it. So I, yeah, sorry. Uh, stop, yet stop again, digging. yet again, you've seen through my pathetic ruse. <laughs> I, yeah. I yeah. did. We didn't, I didn't know his name. We just called him the bread <laughs> No, I did. Do you know, I'm very interested, even though I sort of smashed it to pieces, in why you have thought that he's not portrayed very well. So, yeah, I should have listened better to your reasons. Do you both recall, um, and it was probably the first big story of its time, about 10 years ago, they smashed this slave ring in the home counties where there were, you know, Mm. about 40 or 50 people living on this site. And I read a follow up article and they said one of the one of the most difficult things was for police and social services trying to explain to these people that they were slaves. Some of them just were not Um, having it at all. So there is that Stockholm syndrome. So I think part of this whole thing with Mr. Moss, et cetera, is quite believable. Yeah, I I do. I do. I do appreciate that. I do appreciate that. And that definitely was not something I was questioning at all mm. uh, that it wasn't necessarily the str- okay so if you're using the one of the the, the, the cliched uh, skeleton and fleshing out like it wasn't the skeleton of the plot that i was perturbed by it was the fleshing of it fleshing out and how it was presented and yeah, maybe they've rushed in a bit quickly with it maybe yeah i mean the most unrealistic bit to be honest now that i think about it with blake was that he ate loads of custard creams so <laughs> no one does it- that I was surprised he actually went for the the bacon sandwich in the hostel. You probably never think he'd never want to see a bacon sandwich again in his life. Oh yeah, very good point. He did say that, didn't he? And no one laughed. <laughs> you heard like him that. say that. <laughs> I, I was. Um, I do. I do. I think. I think maybe also it wasn't when I'm talking about the acting. It wasn't just Blake. It was like, for instance, um, there was something quite sort of pantomimish about the way the whole thing was set up when he was being found, and I felt like um, that Kirsty and um, Lee. It was almost being played for comedy, um, and then and, and then all of a sudden you've got this kind of wraith-like figure in a hoodie because to change gear so quickly from kind of like. Um, uh, Kirsty and Lee being there kind of like scared of Rob and I couldn't help but find that funny and then all of a sudden you know you're terrified because you know it's Blake and you're terrified for him and him sort of carrying mm. on the floor yeah also quite bizarre of Lee to think that once he'd established it wasn't Rob he was like he sent him like Rob's got this army of evildoers that go out and stare at houses for him oh I didn't hear that bit yeah did he yeah he'd lost he t- Lee had lost it a bit hadn't he well, yeah. he had really had. Now, what about Lee's small talk while we're talking about him? Where he was, uh, he doesn't know how to chat to people very well, does he? When he said, uh, "Is your tea all right?" Sometimes people make it too strong. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they make it orange, and I want to punch their face in. <laughs> Blake's like, "Where's Miss Moss gone? Yeah. You're scaring me." I know. Very odd. What? I don't know why. Are they? Painting him in massive brush strokes as to be awkward, angry, stupidly. Who they have done it with him crazy. before, haven't they? Because yeah. they, they, when we spoke to Ryan, it was yeah. just after Lee had been sort of very clearly advertised as not Rob. I can't remember exactly what happened. Yeah. But it's it was, DIY cockups. It was the it was the um it was the combination of the DIY and his pre- pre- treasured dollies being smashed up. Um, yeah. And so it was like, yes, if he can weather this storm, surely he's definitely not a Rob. He's a caring, normal, mm. well, normalish man. Um, it and was then, also that he didn't pulverize Kyle, wasn't it? That was yeah, what exactly. So that we've we've yeah. So we've had all these signs that he's not a complete monster, and perhaps it's a kind of slight corrective against this to remind us that actually underneath all that kind of uh, that gentility there is still a you know there is still a sort of a smidgen of Mm. testosterone waiting to be used yeah i might have massively overthought it i thought he was trying to spare blake's confusion by pretending it was still cursed his house when he did the whole thing about let me see if i can find biscuits etc well this is the problem with lee is that by turns we're supposed to accept that he's this emotionally intelligent man who does a quite complex job at a hospital and also is even joy won't let him anywhere near a sharp you know a sharp you know a toolbox <laughs> so it's kind of like you know which lee are you getting you're getting the childlike lee who's not you know sort of like patronized by everyone in the village or this person who really should deserve our respect yeah 
Yeah. I, I'm, I'm now stunned thinking about Helen allowing this person we can't work out into her home. <laughs> really? Well, you know, um, she's not got many choices. She either live, either live alone, um, you know, with all the neighbours pointing at you. I mean, at least, at least Lee sort of uh, seems to love her for who she is. That's, you know, that's quite important. That's yeah, that's value. true. Yeah, from what experience he's had, and he's an idiot. So I don't know if that's very complimentary. And we did have the quite um, thorough backwards and forwards where she sort of panicked and rejected him. And he, he was, and then he turned up at her house confused. He was now in another relationship and then oh, had yeah. every excuse to run away. And he was there saying, you know, and, and basically she'd invited, was it she'd invited him back for a chat? But anyway, mm. um, you know, it, it showed that he would, he, he, he had jumped through a few hoops to stick around and that she had, she had questioned whether she could, you know, deserved yeah. someone or could, could be happy again. Peter, may I compliment you on your memory of all of this? <laughs> it's not my job normally on this show, is it? <laughs> my, my job is to make stupid, not just comments. Yeah. I think there were, there were some holes in that memory, to be honest, but, you know. Oh, what, what do you mean? There we go. Well, first of all, you had the thing where she had the trauma on the date and she couldn't, she ran off because of the song that was playing, which was the song that she'd also stabbed Rob to. Yeah. And then he came to the shop, didn't he, and demanded to know what was going on. And she just went all cold on him and he left and she cried. And then she bumped into him again in the tea, was it in the tea room. And he said that he now had a girlfriend mm. and she went, walked off all sad. And then I think he came back to her and said that he'd dumped her and he wanted to be with her. And that was when it all got back together. Wasn't that how it happened? Sorry, the seagulls seem to be having sex on the opposite <laughs> roof. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it was either I was thinking it's either seagulls or some kind of um sort of Geppetto made clockwork toy kind of squeaking in the background. I couldn't. <laughs> work out. I don't know. I might have just repeated everything Peter said. But well, anyway. I was just going to say thank you, thank you for your pedantry, but I think it was I think more than more than disagreeing with me that you were more adding extra sort of background and color. Mm. Okay. Yeah, good luck to the pair of them is what I say. Oh, the seagulls or... Um, <laughs> Helen, <laughs> Helen they don't Lee. sound like they need luck. They just need loving. They don't need that either. <laughs> Not anymore. Have they finished? Anyway. No, they're still going. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when um, when uh, when Matthew first sort of uh, metamorphosed from a kind of a voice on an answering machine into a real-life friend who he could talk to, mm. it was around the same time that he was... I'd say twice daily documenting a dig dead seagull on the roof opposite him. So it was very tra it was very traumatic. I loved those tweets about yeah. your seagull relationship. They went on for ages, didn't they? Prior to the death, you were always looking at these seagulls, weren't you? Trevor and Eve. Yeah, original gangster Matthew <laughs> followers will will you know know that Matthew has a, a long and complicated relationship with the seagull community. Yeah, don't go back too far into my tweets, please, guys. <laughs> Oh, we don't want Matthew. Oh, no, don't, please don't cancel Matthew. Don't, don't want my UKIP days coming out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, has the election finished now? Are the three wheeler vehicles shouting out? Oh, I was going to do an awful Portuguese accent then. I won't go on, do that. Go on. No, you, no, have no. you have to practice for next week. Oh, no, no, I can't do that. No. You did your offensive Chinese one a few minutes ago, so why not do uh, why not do a bit of a Portuguese one? Did I? Well, you did Lee doing a karate scream. Oh, yeah, that was just, it wasn't an accent. That was like a noise of someone involved in martial arts. It could be any person from any any background. Will you guys keep it down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw but, something at them. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Were you shouting at us? Sorry, Matthew. No, but, All right. I mean, let's, let's lift the veil here. Part of the reason this is happening is because we're recording in the day for the very first time. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? It's weird yeah. doing it like this. I, I, quite I mean, I'm, on, I'm only on my second port, so I don't really know how, how well I'm yeah, doing. That's, that's a good point. This might be the first time we've recorded when you two haven't been absolutely off your faces. On, um, <laughs> on a... I'm drinking red wine, I have to tell you. Oh, already? Yep. Holy moly. Well, this is, you know, this is the thing is um, uh, Kerry is... I've got a I've got a beer in front of me. I must confess. Really? Yes. It, oh it loosens the cogs, doesn't it, or whatever? That's what Alice says, anyway. It's Friday, and term starts on Monday, and 
bugger to all of it basically yeah i've had a right stressful weird old week as well and uh anyway yeah i've taken redundancy as some people might have seen on twitter if they look at my personal twitter page so i'm in a weird almost elated or hysterical i don't know <laughs> sort of state of knowing i i am very sensitive to kerry's situation i do i do understand that she's you know it's she's been as a company for a long time i think she we've talked about you know mm -hmm. carrie's dedication to her team and her and, and and being professional many times in the past but it is difficult to be too pitying when the word gardening leave are being thrown around <laughs> yeah i was just about to say that's not what you said before we came on air for you i called just some very rude words yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's difficult to pity someone who's on gardening leave but it I, really is i'm not want. i'm not after pity peter you know, I don't want that day ever to come. So no. don't worry. Uh, party, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like I maybe deserve a bit of me time after 27 years of, <laughs> of working <laughs> and 20 years of single motherhood. Uh, so f*** you. <laughs> yeah. Is well, that I'm... how you sold it to your boss? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm very professional in the workplace which is probably very hard to imagine, but I am. I don't, I mean, this is, this is fine because I don't have to pick up the pieces. It's going to be Matthew that's going to be wheeling you around Porto in a shopping trolley. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll have one of those caps with a wine bottle and, you know, either side and pipes going down to your mouth. So, mm. you know that. I'm a sophisticated lady. It'll be, it'll, I, You're not sophisticated. You know, I'm really, <laughs> shut up, Peter. Right. I am. Um, don't smash that uh, fantasy I have about myself. Uh, no, I'm so looking forward to it. I cannot believe it's next weekend. I will be, well, no, it's not next weekend. Wednesday to Sunday, isn't it? Yes. I'm going to meet you, Matthew. Oh, my five, God. Five days away, isn't it? Yeah. How bizarre. Can our sort of triangle of relationships take this disturbance in the force, the unequal disturbance of the force? You two have this powerful connection and I'm now left out on the... On a limb. No, what I'm hoping is that secretly you've got an easy jet flight and you're meeting us out there, Peter. Oh, does that mean because I'm I'm going to be rushing to the t-shirt printers to get Peter's face on the Prince Regent <laughs> for the two of us? <laughs> Am I going to need three? <laughs> if, if, that, if the pre, if the if the earlier comment is is left in, that mm. will make sense. Yeah. Uh, we talked so much this morning. I don't have time to edit out all this nonsense. It's all going in. Good. But um, should we make even? I mean. Should we try? I'm trying to think of some. Okay, so I'm looking down the list of nonsense we have to talk about. So, how, can we have some love for Chelsea? Um, yeah, um, let's do that. Should we talk about Chelsea? Yeah, because uh, um, I, you know, I to be honest, I apart from Chelsea, talking about your trip to Port, to, Port, uh, to Porto, uh, Kerry, is a lot more attractive to me. But Chelsea is probably the one topic from this week that could, could make me, you know, happily go back to talking about the Archers. This the first time we're hearing Chelsea with this actress, right? Yeah. Um, very much chip off the old block. Yep. From from her mother, Tracy. Wonderfully so. Yeah. Uh, very good at sticking it to her mum. Yeah. In the same way as Tracy was other people. She was wrong. Tracy was wrong about Nigel Mantle. He is on Instagram, so she looks very silly. He's got an Instagram page. <laughs> I immediately checked that up because I don't have a life. Um. And, yeah, I liked – it was a little bit of the old trope of the archers, wasn't it, where you – the have and the have-nots, but now it was transferred to the the, the social media world. Like, yeah. I don't have money, and mm. I see that everyone else has money on Instagram. And, you know, it's no, often it's made Instagram, out – Insta, she said. Insta. God, Which is so that, that, No, that was shit because people call it Instagram. I thought, you know, some sort of – youth advisor has said they don't call it instagram they call it insta they don't it was quite touching wasn't it because it turned out that you know she had i mean she's definitely a student because she spends all day at home watching no win no fee ads <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a key sign that she's uh yeah. she's in study um and i thought it was nice that she was going to split the money half half with blake it wasn't mm -hmm. all for her but then tracy had to sit her down well she sat down next to her in the playground didn't she and just said you know, you don't, we don't have loads of stuff, but that's not the key to eternal happiness. Mm. You know, because you have these people, maybe, for example, they have a a John Galliano dress or a La, La Pavoni Europicola espresso coffee machine that they buy online for 
three hundred. I mean, all of these things they don't necessarily make you happy, do they? No, clearly not. Uh, it would seem. But uh... <laughs> right, very quickly, one, it was not that much money. It was actually that was, the, that was the whole point. Is I don't have that money, so I bought an incredibly cheap one from a charity shop. But anyway, did I get the brand right? You did. Yes, well, yeah, I put it. I, that was I, I so put it... fucking brilliant, Matthew. That research, well done. Anyway, back to Chelsea. I uh, thought it, I, I really enjoyed. So, obviously, it's a different lift, right? Um, ca- uh, creating a kind of a persona around a, a, a stroppy teenager, of, you know, who's sort of, you know, it's it's more all the themes are more universal. It's 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 obviously more relatable for all of us. So, I'm not I'm not trying to make draw an unfair, unfair comparison with Blake, but it everything I wanted for Blake, they managed with Chelsea in terms of, you know, you've got a sense of, you've got a real sense of who she was. You've got a r- real deep understanding of how she might develop and, uh, and, and, you know, what her motivations mm. were. I th- Yeah, it was, it was well handled. I think like you've just said, she was giving back to her mum, wasn't she sort of in the car. I loved it when Linda was um, lecturing Tracy about the speeding and then um, Chelsea was saying, uh, do you solemn? You've got to solemnly swear, and do you want it in writing? <laughs> yes. Uh, it, it, Just really... throwing Tracy's lines back in her face. Your yeah. life's in someone's hands, and Linda was like, "That's so true, Chelsea." <laughs> yes. Very, very funny. But she's obviously she adores her mom. That's touching scene where Chelsea was on the swings. She's seventeen, but sit, wanting to be a grown up. But and Tracy went, "But you're sitting on the swings," um, and. Then it was revealed that she wanted to give the money to her mum because she feels for her and she never has anything nice. And yeah, she's obviously very sensitive as a young woman. And um, Tracy was saying about her hairdressing and she's got real talent trying to boost her up. You you know, you have got a future to look to. I, I'm interested in that relationship and where Chelsea goes. Not the football team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no one's interested in that. I, I didn't like the way that Ch- Chelsea's appearance was just a vessel for people to make veiled comments through Twitter about football teams. Mm. Well, it's a it's a shit club and it's a shit name, so you know <laughs> it's an easy link to make. Uh, but I I did um I, d- <laughs> I, I did I was slightly disappointed in. You're still hurting about that coffee comment, aren't you? <laughs> I know. But I thought it was I thought it was very well done, and I but I do quite I mean, like that Chelsea as a name for a child is seen to be quite you know, rough and common, isn't it, basically? I th- I mean, I think, it, well, I mean, is it, though? They've chosen it on purpose. Yeah. I mean, even if it's even if it's not, even if that's not the truth of things, that's the kind of, the, that's, that's, that's the held truth, if not the actual yeah. truth, isn't it? Yeah. The, um, she, I, yet again, I'm going to get on this particular soapbox. I was disappointed when, when it was Chelsea's talent was that she could be a really good hairdresser. Now, on the one hand, I think being a really good hairdresser is a potentially fantastic way of spending your life. And I maybe I would have liked to have been a hairdresser. So I'm not making a snobbish comment about hairdressers, but it does seem to me that there is this kind of um, opportunity apartheid between the haves and the have-nots of the village. So the, in, the intelligent girl from the Aldridge family is Alice the engineer or Debbie, the sort of, you know, the, um, the business-minded sort of, you know, uh, agricultural specialist or something. And, of course, for a, uh, for a Grundy or a, oh, God, what they help me out here. What's, what's the maternal name, uh, Susan's maternal name? The Carters. No, no, no. Sorry. Anyway, it'll come to it'll come to one of us in a minute. But anyway, but for for the for the working class element of the of the uh, the village, they have aptitude in hairdressing. Horribin. Do you mean Tracy yeah. Horribin? Yeah. Horribins, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So I, you know, this is not a reflection of my snobbery. It's just like, why couldn't Chelsea? Why couldn't she have had some kind of entrepreneurial drive? Like I've always wanted, I've always wanted Emma's entrepreneurial mm. drive to be kind of expressed in some kind of meaningful way. And it's just like here, here was a really good a good chance to sort of show show a young person who doesn't who doesn't want to take a sort of standard trip through you know standard trip through education to still succeed to still make the yes, best but, of their, but, but, um, Peter, Peter, yeah? I, I reckon Tracy was trying to be kind and boost her but I think Chelsea was thinking I don't just want to be a hairdresser really yeah I think she'll do something more 
So you think that um, so you think that uh, Tracy was an expression of all my kids. So, uh, Tra- Tracy dare dare not dream. Like you know the way that she rejected yeah. the chance to go not off to da- um... not dare not dream. I just think she was trying to comfort her in that moment of doubting herself and was saying, "Look, you're a really good hairdresser." Just saying nice things about the things she's actually done and seen. Yeah. Oh, but, fair but, but you could hear that Chelsea was like, mm, you know, okay. But I reckon. She won't set settle, and set, hairdressing is not settling. By the way, you know, my hairdresser makes a bloody fortune, and it's yeah, brilliant, absolutely. and it's a true skill. But um, I, I know what you mean. Your point is is made about you know the middle class ones get the sort of more interesting, exciting, supposedly me- more meaningful uh, opportunities. And you know, is Chelsea ever going to get that equivalent? don't know but it sounds like she's not satisfied with where she is basically so i think i've got hope yeah well i i I hope i hope you're right because i do think we need to have someone who's not an archer coming Mm -hmm. through and and doing well based i mean for instance josh 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 is kind of um autodidactic very uh uh, self-motivated driven desire and kind of um a, a, a forward thinking attitude is what i want for one of these other kids but loads of, of people don't like josh do they on twitter they really don't no but it but at least it would buck the trend of i mean you could you could make the argument how are they supposed to make useful comments about how our society is stacking up if they have unrealistic portrayals of you know working class people's yeah. lives yeah that'd be funny if all the working class people suddenly get really excellent jobs and all the middle class ones don't it'll be like hang on hang on a minute yeah but just at least one of them, I guess. Just someone yeah. needs to. Someone needs to have. Someone needs to show that uh, it's not hereditary. Yeah, you can break through. Yeah. I think if you had uh, someone with Chelsea's accent saying a lot of the things Josh says, you would warm to her a lot more than you yes. warm to Josh. Yeah. Um, I actually like Josh a lot. One of the things I liked about living in America was the fact that you didn't have to be embarrassed. There were certain things that we're embarrassed about over here or, you know, like and being ambitious, talking about money, being, you know, I mean, I'm not saying greed is good, but sort of like Josh's, Josh's unashamed. I, I, mm. I would consider myself a socialist, but also I'm not embarrassed about having nice things. Like I always confuse me when um, two Jags, what's his name? John Prescott. He, mm. One of the ways they mauled him was for the fact that he liked to have a glass of champagne or have a, you know, like a trip to a nice hotel. And it's like, well, surely wanting that for everyone, it doesn't, you know, doesn't um, devalue your kind of socialist credentials. Anyway, we, yeah. we've moved on from that now. It's a donkey sanctuary that's damning, isn't it? Oh, what's that? All they about? tried to they tried to shame Keir Starmer for his mother owning a donkey sanctuary. Yeah, that backfired. Really? Yes. Yeah, I haven't seen that. This was this is going back a couple of years when he was uh, in the labor ship, uh, labor leadership. Challenge. And that's bad because what? Well, it, it completely, it completely, it, they didn't follow it because at the same time as we had a guy called De Perfeffel Johnson rising to the head of the Conservative Party and being maybe the 20th Prime Minister of this country to come from Eton, uh, Keir Starmer, whose dad was a, a like a technician and whose mum was a social worker, when she became when she became ill, he used his mo- his money. Well, she was like her sight was failing. She, he bought the field behind her house so that mm-hmm. she could like make, create a sanctuary for donkeys. And this was what the Express and the Mail used to attack him. Was like, you how, know, how can you attack that? I don't. I think I think it was just a, uh, to write the word ass several times. I think. And also oh. because the idea was that he, in order to buy this huge field in West London, he had to have a lot of money. But they they failed to mention that the the, the, the ah. unlike so many other people, he had actually made this money doing okay. good work as a uh, uh, as a, a lawyer campaigning for you know other people's ah, rights. The field was I, in West London. I see. Yeah, okay. I'm not I'm not a blinkered Kistama fan, but I yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it is astonishing to see him attacked <laughs> in the same in the yeah. same environment that Jacob Rees-Mogg is allowed to walk around breathing and un, un, mm. unmolested. And actually, you're right about Josh in terms of he just sort of speaks his mind. You know, I quite like that about him. You know, he's just like he bursts into rooms and goes, "Yeah, they will." You, you could have knocked. He's like, "Yeah, I could have, but I didn't." Yeah. <laughs> Here I am. Yeah. You know. There is a bit um, of warmth about him, actually. In that, oh. you know, quite plain speaking, you know, in a way that's uh, uh, it's a very attractive quality. I've always, and to be fair, Carrie, despite mauling you several times today, that is something I've called out many times in the past. When um when David and Josh were 
at the market cafe and Beth walked in, I wrote down one simple note for them. Josh loves Beth. And I wrote that down on Tuesday. Oh. And it, that came out later, didn't it? It did. Ben uh, actually said, you fancy my girlfriend, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Being right is an addictive drug, isn't it, Matthew? Once you, once you taste it, you can't. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, what, what actually happened was for the beginning of that conversation, I thought it was Ben with the oh, familiarity and so it was only sorry. when he buggered off to get the tea for her i was like no hang on that's josh yeah on my, is he cozying up to her on my tuesday notes i put david in pub then crossed pub out and then put with ben question mark crossed that out and went josh S- exclamation mark they were at the market somehow weren't they and it was yeah. josh yeah exactly the same they sounded really it was similar that. to me yeah i was like he's acting ben like towards mm. beth so he must have the hots for her yeah what's going to happen there then will they uh, Ooh, i don't well it's going to be ac- it's going to be academic because apparently um jill's going to stab beth to death anyway oh yeah because of <laughs> cake wars isn't it i mean that was a bit lame josh saying oh you know that that cake being really excellent is going to cause trouble <laughs> I, I hope it does but i doubt it I, I, would, I mean, she did. Jill has had her wobbles in the past, hasn't she? I would love it if her ego. It, it turns out her ego is entirely <laughs> cake based. Um, you know, um, she's you know to use you know to borrow from the, the Great British Bake Off. Her showstopper is is all cake. That's that all she has. Wow! How will she bring her down though? How will she? Will it be verbal onslaught? Will it just be a punch in the kidneys? She'll get Leonard <laughs> to draw a very unflattering picture of her and hang yeah. it in the hallway. <laughs> he would. He, he wasn't mentioned, was he? They mentioned Bert. They mentioned the rest of the family, but Leonard didn't get a mention. I thought oh, that was a little bit. I like Leonard. Yeah, I like him. Yeah. Leonard is often used as a kind of a, a Jill whisperer, isn't he? In a way of kind mm-hmm. of offering a kind of a kind of audience perspective on stuff. So hopefully we will get to. As, as Jill is picking up the shards of her teeth as she's kind of <laughs> shattered the enamel, trying to suppress a, you know, a, a guttural scream, that um, then will be there just sort of saying, there's only cake there, you know. Well, it's, it's... Do you know, I, I, th- I think we need to recalibrate the time capsule to put this in. <laughs> what do you think that sugar sculpture was that was like the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Mm. What, what was going on there? I don't know. I mean, would you bother? And also, to Jill's credit, I think simplicity is her thing, isn't it? You know, she's not going to be impressed by a sugar sculpture. Obviously, Beth doesn't know that probably. But... Yeah, my lovely wife is always going on about how good my cooking is. And I'm always, you know, like, to an embarrassing degree, people come around and I mean, it's basically, you know, um, she's amazing at, at so many other things, but cooking is, is not one of them. Um, and so I, I'm always trying to tell her, look, all I do is like the very standard stuff, but I've done it so many times. That it's just like effortless, but I can't do fancy cooking like Matthew can, like, you know, like proper chefy cooking. And so mm-hmm. when other people are around and she, so I think Jill's like me, I think she's just, you know, she's just spent years and years and years doing basic stuff. So she does a good drizzle cake. She does it like, is that what you were saying, Kerry? Well, kind of. But but I don't think Jill will. She's not the sort of person who will be impressed by someone doing sugar sculpture. I can't no, exactly. believe, I can't believe I'm sticking up for Jill here because she's not one of my favourites. But I think she will definitely appreciate the effort that's gone into the gesture, and will be very gracious about the leaning tower of pizza sugar thingy, Bob. You know. Yeah, it's sort of like a, why would you bother? I think would be the. I mean, I. It's like, um, who was it who said, uh, oh, you, Kerry, you said recently, you pointed, you reminded us of the fact that um, uh, Susan had said, well, lasagna is a very complicated dish, isn't it, Neil? You know, pointing <laughs> to the amount of fuss you have to go through. Mm. And I think, you know, if I went round someone's house and they had a great big sugar st- sculpture on top of a cake, I would think to myself, well, that's a lost <laughs> afternoon. Yes. You know, why, why the hell have you done that? You know, you could have just... Get some you know, Ben and Jerry's out and shut up or something. Yeah, yeah well, or, or, or just bake, bake a nice cake <gasps> and spend the rest of the afternoon. That just reminds me, I put on Twitter a question about, you know, because Jennifer, this Jennifer weirdness about Ruth has put me on, she's power mad and she's put me on starters and I cannot believe it. I mean, what what other reason would I be making elaborate desserts on a Wednesday morning? And Brian's trying to sort of work out who the fuck he's going to leave his his business to and she's dithering about oh. over bloody Pavlovis. Anyway, um, but you know, this elaborate dessert thing. And I put on Twitter, 
an elaborate dessert in my childhood was having a ski yogurt thrown at not thrown oh, yes given to me you know it was yogurts for pudding weird i don't know wouldn't have a yogurt for pudding now breakfast yes pudding no but um, I, remember, I remember going around a friend's house and having angel delight yeah and i think feeling like i've been i might as well have been at versailles the court of versailles <laughs> you know um sort of just my eyes blinded by the you know the guilt and gold oh what flavor can you remember Oh, just uh, 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 well, there was the pink one and the brown one. <laughs> well, it was banana, butterscotch, or strawberry were the predominant three, I think. Uh, straw, it would have been strawberry. I mean, I, I okay. think I only had it the one, the one time, but like, you know, because, yeah. um, you mean, know, we, we, I mean, I, we, you know, we, we were fine, but we'd, but I, th- mm. those were the kind of luxuries is the wrong word, but just, it just, just didn't it's happen. It's the time, right? isn't it? I mean, yeah. which brings me to the point on Twitter, I sort of went, you know, ski yogurts in my past. We don't, we're not a pudding household now. I saw you mentioning that. Yeah. yeah and I said, you know, we might have a Magnum if there's one knocking about in the freezer. I never make puddings. Does anyone else? And it was really interesting to see on Twitter people saying we make a crumble at the weekends or if someone's coming to dinner, we do. But generally speaking, no one has, uh, I like pudding as a word rather than dessert. But I wondered, do you guys, generally speaking, make, a pudding i mean even more anti-pudding i will if we go out to a, if you go out to a restaurant by the time the pudding comes every nerve in my body is just screaming why are we still sitting here <laughs> just get me out of here and the pudding oh. is just torture it's just no, like, but at home at home at home no i mean you know i mean bars of chocolate and ice cream but no no making okay. puddings. yeah matthew chef, okay, no. chef matthew um probably something as easy as a tray bake and then that will hang around for a few days so that will that will count as dessert for a few days afterwards what's that like a spongy thing sponge or brownie um okay did i did i send you guys the photos of the lemon curd slices i made oh yeah they were good yeah yeah so they're good they hang around forever and they they do taste heavenly mm. so um but you go going back to i mean ski yogurts yes they were certainly a staple in mm. my grandmother's uh fridge i do remember going around to the kids house down the road like peter and they were serving angel delight in plastic boats <laughs> and i remember oh. going i remember going back to my dad and saying like, why don't we eat like that and my dad was like uh because we don't <laughs> oh yeah i remember my best friend at primary school's mum had like always a cake tin full of her bakes and i sort of went to my mum we don't have that and my mum was a teacher and sort of went yeah we're not going to either <laughs> yeah i think it, it was the idea that like they're eating full-on crap all the time and we're not going to do that it wasn't crap um, it was just lack of time and energy really mm, you know yeah. but but yeah i just wondered if you guys as as cooking folk i just remember the molecular gastronomy of ice magic do you remember that oh yeah the, school, you, yeah i thought that was magic chocolate sauce that you put on ice cream and it freezes to solid yes. on contact with the ice cream yeah basically you've got like a rubicon and we're all old enough and i know it sounds weird matthew and i to be old enough to say this but uh sorry kerry that sounds like, sounds like a scene not weird for kerry obviously she's ancient but um, i am yeah. Um, but yeah, the, uh, like the food experiments that were basically forced, the UK was used as a kind of like a experimental zone for kind of um, food technology. And I think a lot of that stuff is what we're talking about, like the 1970s and early 80s, when it was still this kind of very aggressive marketing mm. convenience food and stuff that you could just like when matthew said food you know was it food technology you said matthew or molecular gastronomy thank you exactly yeah which is the kindest possible way of just saying chemicals in a bag mm. yeah i mean i was always a bit suspicious of that sauce that froze on contact with ice cream i thought what the oh, f- i love is- that yeah I no, bet it was around- but what the f- is going on in that yeah. thing to make it do that i liked that it did it it was funny but i thought what why is that happening and also in a restaurant i would always rather have a cheese board than a dessert Mm. Mm. that's a common debate isn't it cheese or dessert i i'm for cheese for me more that's just something that you have in the evening with nothing else (laughs) i just whop the cheese board out get the open the wine or the port and you don't need instead of dinner kind of thing yeah Yeah. with a few meats on the side maybe i've I've sat in bed and eaten Mm. a giant buffalo mozzarella like a ski yogurt 
<laughs> I've done that on at least one occasion. How it's lovely. Fun. Yeah, what a beautiful picture. Although in those days I was a beautiful picture. These days that it would be. Oh, I mean, you, don't, you don't want to tear your own eyes, tear your own eyes out. Do you, do you take Do you take any bread on you with this journey to bed, oh, yeah. Peter? What harvest? What's it? No, no. It was, it was very specifically. I went to my favourite cheese shop where I used to live, and they were just shutting down. And I saw him about to throw away a giant buffalo mozzarella. It was it was it had gone off literally minutes mm. before, and I was like, yeah, the, you know this. <laughs> don't worry, we can find a home for that. <laughs> What about those camemberts where they stick garlic and rosemary in and bake it and you just Never dip. last night. I mean, the idea that I could get a brie or a camembert in the house and then wait long enough to put it in an oven or st- stick stuff in it. No, no, no. This is why cheese does just, <laughs> I can't buy it because I just, I'll just eat it straight away. You know, it, is, it just goes. It's one of the, it's one of the best things in life, isn't it? I think. You have a hard decision to make. Which yeah. day am I booking us in to go for the Francesinia sandwich? Oh, yes. In Porto. We need we need to ch- talk logistics with Jeremy, my my lovely friend who's actually paying for my trip to go to Porto. You know, if I start sort of going, yeah, I'm doing a podcast on this day. We're going here on that day, and he'll be like, oh no, he, he's a vegetarian or no pescatarian. I just I think I've told you that in the past. So we need oh, to- Portugal. Perfect. Yeah, there's, pl- there's plenty of fish here. We're right next to the sea. Ace, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that thing that you've shown me before, which looks amazing, you can get a non meaty version, can't you? Yeah, if you go to Brassau or places like that, I don't know if Brassau yeah. are going to give me money for mentioning them, but um, ah. yeah, we can go. That'll be just around the corner from where you're staying. So, that's one of the ah. busier places in town to get one. Okay. One of my life ambitions is to go on a uh, on a bike and go all the way from um, Basque country all the way around to southern Portugal, just eating. Cycling, eating, cycling, eating. Because I think it's kind of like um, food-wise, some of the best in the world, isn't it, Matthew? Yeah, yeah, lovely Basque food in that region. Portugal, definitely. I was up in um, Bilbao and up in uh, what's the other place? Uh, Santander. The food there was fantastic. Did you just click your knuckles? <laughs> I clicked my fingers, but clicking of the knuckles is massively popular in Portugal with everybody. How so revolting! Te- I'm yeah, not, they I'm not they, doing they, that. My students do it all the time. It's Awful. very unnerving. Awful. They'll get arthritis. I am often telling them that, and then I have to teach them what arthritis is on the board. Yeah. <laughs> Kerry's going to come back only knowing one phrase, which is you'll get arthritis. He said in the very <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, I think we've covered our Chelsea, Brian, and Kerry go to Mallorca. We didn't touch on that, but, you know, succession. Oh, did we even speak about that? I don't know. I know we've got to wrap up, but. Yeah, the fact that Brian has nobody to give the farm to, which I so I'm so sorry that I did call it the wrong farm name last week. Me too. It was my fault. I did it first, and then Matty followed. So, and then I edited out me saying the right farm and left me <laughs> saying the wrong farm. I don't. I don't know how anyone could be asked to learn which farm is which. I always have to look it up before I tweet something about one of the farms. Pretty much. Yeah, I should remember though, because Bridge Farm is always Tom and his stupid sausages, isn't it? Bridge Farm, Bridge Farm. It's that one. I like. Yes, my my kind of um uh my kind of learnt response is Bridge Farm equals irritation. Yeah. Beth and Tony, um, Home Farm. I think I've got locked down, but I can never remember Brookfield because I just think it's just it's just so meh. Like I'm just, I'm bored of it. Yeah. It, so it was. Yeah. It was Stella that planted the seeds of doubt in Brian's yes. mind about succession. Yep. And then there was the, I quite enjoyed David this week. He kind of orbited around all these people and like didn't really do much, but he was, he was kind of useful. I thought he was the useful idiot this week. Yeah, he did do arches. a very, very hollow. I'm so sorry about that to Brian when he said about Alice having uh, decided to get divorced. Yeah, that Very, was during the the Pavlova handover, wasn't it? Yeah, really poor acting, I thought. And then he told him the story of Guy Mackey. Yeah. Man who, you know, and then I liked at the end, Brian went, what happened? And I thought Dave was going to, oh, it's a terrible story. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just like he, he packed up, didn't he? Sold yeah. up and moved on. Yeah, they lost out. They ran out of imagination for that one. So based on one little anecdote from uh, David, Brian's selling everything and his kids will be rich. And Jennifer, when Jennifer, when Jennifer started off saying, um, oh, I don't know whether this is a very good idea. And then when Brian went, we can have a big new home. He went, oh, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the love eggs oh. got switched on at that yeah. point, didn't they? Yeah. You're joking. You're too young to retire. You could have a big kitchen, Jennifer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah. Will there will there be a breakfast island? It's it's gonna it's gonna be a it's gonna be a horrible. I mean, the irony is that uh, he's worrying about Chris's greed, and we all know that it's going to be Adam and Kate. You know, clawing each other. Yeah. Yeah. When he ran down his options of children to take over the farm, yes. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, that's what he was doing, wasn't it? It was like, Adam, oh, he's buggered off. Debbie, she's in another country, doesn't seem to pay that much attention to what's going on here. Kate, nutter. Talking to a tree. Yeah, Alice, uh, no. And then, uh, what's the face? Stella had to sort of go, "Um, what about Rory? Because he hadn't mentioned him, naturally. Uh, And he sort of went, don't really know he's off at university and she went well what about after that like, i haven't ever thought about that or spoken to him or anything Harry, so, yeah. who um is going to be on the podcast with cyrus in years to come max or mimi Which oh succession you know mimi it'll be mimi definitely yeah. okay and just, have you asked max about that no i'm being very presumptuous although he did hear me earlier he i was playing um last night's episode as i was making myself tea and toast and it was out loud on my phone and i said i'm so sorry to you know put this pain <laughs> into your ear holes <laughs> literally i'm so sorry oh, and no, no, we was... can't have max anyway we can't have max because he um poo-pooed highlander uh, we know about this from a couple of weeks ago so i'm saying oh, yeah. it max. vetoing max oh. sorry anyway he was really giving the side eye at some of the uh, storylines that were ha- it was blake talking to linda was it last night's episode yeah blake talking to linda in an overly pathetic way. And he was like, what the f*** is going on there? Who on earth makes side eye at the archers and then criticises it on a podcast? <laughs> he's perfect. Actually, no, take it back. He's perfect. We want I mean, I'm, I'm just bringing in, I'm just going to bring in the seagulls because I've got no kids. Oh, yeah. well. oh Matthew. And well done for not saying that I know of. Yeah, well um, done, Matthew, yeah, exactly. for not having yeah, children. Right to you. <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to make jokes about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. So um, we know that the podcast is in safe hands. Max has um, been rejected and then and then um, very forcibly accepted. Mm. Um, Cyrus, I'm not sure. It's too early to say. Matthew's got his seagulls. Um, but next week. I am not going to be around. Um, it was decided that um, it should be uh, uh, Kerry and Matthew solo um, in the same room. Intimacy. What sort of what sort of atmosphere is it going to be, guys? Yeah, it was decided by you though, Peter, because your father's here. You know, it's not <laughs> not we haven't taken over this thing. It's more we, Peter. We're in Porto. Get out of our way. I yeah. Come on, I've never let the truth get in the way of uh, the version yeah. of events that I like to tell. I preferred the idea that you two had excluded me, but anyway, um, <laughs> we did not. Yeah. My dad's around, so it's going to be those two um, sort of um, squaring up in a in Matthew's spare room. So. Yeah, should no. be exciting. I think it's going to be in the apartment that we are in, oh, right. possibly, because it's it seems more spacious than your sweat box. I'm not in a sweat box, Kerry. I'm in my spare room. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Matthew's is such an intelligent guy. I thought it was absolutely fascinating to hear Matthew's attempts to try and make his pantry work as a <laughs> studio. Those first few. Weeks I still we think in. fondly of those photographs. Yeah. Of the Matthew, notes taped to the various shelves Matthew, and the pictures Matthew, of yeah. tins of sardines. Matthew half naked with it, with it, with his yeah, notes propped up on a can of sardines. Know, was, I'm, is, I'm all about the method. This is part yeah. of why we love him. You know, it's a small yeah. part. The rest of it, we're not telling you about. But it no. does. It does show how you, you know, like uh, intelligence is not a kind of universal quality. It has its dips. It has its troughs, troughs and peaks. Um, <laughs> So anyway, a week without Peter next week, Kerry. Yeah, woo! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 oh, I, sorry, Matthew, I forgot. There's no one ever scores any cheap points on Lava Blapavoni Euro Piccolo Peter. That's uh, yeah, I'm left well alone, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, enjoy your dad, Peter. We're gonna have fun. I no, well, well, you know, my 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 dad and fun are very much um uh, uh, a part and parcel, but um, it, it, he's not necessarily pod compatible. Yeah, we should get him on. Has he ever listened to the Archers? Oh, my dad! My 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 dad is a truly fascinating man. He's a wonderful man. 
Um, but uh, and but well, actually, do you know what? Similar to me, he he even if he doesn't know about something, he'll still have a good old crack at um, talking as if he does. So mm. he probably did quite well on it. It's like that guy that turned up at the BBC as a taxi driver, but then ended up being interviewed as an economist. Oh, I imagine, love that imagine guy. Him, imagine him, but twice the height, half the width, and white. And yeah, that's that's very. We much should like definitely that. put. A, we should definitely post a link to that on Sunday if people haven't seen it. I <laughs> one of the weirdest things was there was, was teaching a class here about people that pretend to be something they're not, and then I told that story to the class, showed them the video, and then when I finally pulled out the homework from the book that I hadn't checked, it was about that guy. <gasps> oh serendipity I, I can still I picture vividly his face immediately that sort of slight sheepish like i think that I'm was doing my, that, my best here yeah, that freeze frame <laughs> was my twitter profile pic oh, for about a year brilliant i used to work at the beep and i can i could re and yeah, i think i hadn't left it too long after that happened and i i can really understand how he ended up in that room like, you know, everything is done in such a kind of, and this is the way we do it, and this is the BBC way, and we follow these rules, and you do this, and you wear this badge. I can very easily imagine just being waltzed into a room, and then you're like, oh, well, this is, <laughs> you know, uh, this is how this is how interviews happen here. And then that's, mm-hmm. you know, that. so I, I did feel, his name was Guy something. But anyway. Yes, it was. Oh, the, he was the, adorable. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the late, great Elliot Smith turned up at, like, Q Magazine or NME once, and he was in such a state in his his in terms of his clothes and appearance that reception thought he was the plumber and sent him down to the basement to fix a leak and he was actually there to give an interview to the enemy <laughs> i've worked in a building where i've been both coming in the front door as uh you know peter fickling creative what's it's called and come in the back door as a white van man um you know within a similar time frame because i was kind of freelancing so i was to, you know like, uh, anyway you've just nice said time. come in the front door come <laughs> in the back door and i can't allow that to go without some sort of um... i have i have aggressively penetrated a building up to the front door <laughs> and up the back door um both in in different in you know wearing different clothes <laughs> different what, clothes. what's and, that building in any way satisfied by this experience well no when i took the building up the front door it was very satisfied with me and i was greeted with a, a <laughs> smile. and then it showed it said a lot about our society when i um when i rocked up to the back door um <laughs> they were they weren't happy with me at all and i was treated quite quite un- unpleasantly anyway i just love your dead pan delivery peter i've got to say it is made me cry. oh you mean anal sex and vaginal sex you dirty <laughs> cow carry <Kerry>. unbelievable <laughs> I only just worked it out. I'm hey, bad. Peter, oh. you can't say sex on a podcast. Sorry, you can't right. say sex on a podcast. Yes. <laughs> and another incredible impersonation of Kerry Borbis ends this week's The Cider Shed. I know uh, where my new career is taking me. <laughs> uh, 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 we've run out of time, so I'm just going to say yeah. Twitter normal, Facebook normal, Instagram normal. <laughs> We're not normal. We're not normal. Yeah. Goodbye. And, um, see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hang on.